Well, hello again, and welcome to the second video uh, related to making some engineering calculations associated with propane. And so this is the second video in a set of three videos that I have planned for you. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, we're going to pick up where we left off from the first video, uh, and we're going to use this uh, propane cylinder as our example. So in the last video, what we did was we demonstrated that it was rather easy to determine the mass in this vessel, uh, the volume of the vessel, and then we were able to get the specific volume from those two. In this module, uh, it's really related to uh, what's going on in chapter three related to phase change substances. And I'm going to show you um, how to determine the pressure inside this tank um, without putting a pressure gauge on it. It's really kind of a cool, it, it, to some extent, it's a little bit of a neat trick. So just let's recap what we've already gotten done. We know that propane is C3H8. Um, we determined for this particular situation, we had 0.45 kilograms of propane contained in this tank. Um, we calculated the volume, that ex the extensive property volume of this tank. And then given those two, we got the specific volume of this tank. Uh, point, uh, let's see, 2.121 times 10 to the minus three cubic meters per kilogram, and that's going to be our key. That, that is going to be a key for us to pinpoint uh, the pressure inside the tank, um, as well as uh, really pinpointing uh, some thermodynamic properties of what's inside the tank as well. Uh, so uh, let's see. I'm going to have to refresh my memory. Nope, I remember what the go live is all about. So before I go to the next slide, I'm ready to go live. Uh, let's see. Okay, just to go uh, full full screen on this, I'm going to shake this bottle, th this vessel. Okay, it you can't hear it, but it's easy for me to hear that I can hear sloshing around. I can feel it. I can sort of feel the momentum of the um, of the material of the propane in the tank. It, uh, when I stop, it tries to keep moving, and I can hear sloshing. What does that tell me? What, what does that tell me as an engineer of what's going on in this, pro, in, in this tank? It tells me that propane is, uh, uh, can exist here in the world as either or both a gas or a liquid, One, uh, both. It can, it can be gaseous propane, it can be liquid propane. And that depends on the pressure inside this, uh, this vessel but, you know, without even knowing the science of it, I can shake it. And by golly, I can hear with my ears that there, there's something going on in the tank where it's not totally full of liquid. Otherwise, I couldn't hear any sloshing. And it's not totally full of vapor uh, because I wouldn't hear any sloshing. There no, wouldn't be any liquid in there. So, for example, this empty tank, th there's no sloshing to hear. It, it, with, with my ears... There's, I basically functionally there's no liquid in that one. All right. So what's what's different between these two? Well, what's different between the full tank and the and the we wouldn't won't say empty tank, but nearly empty is that uh, this is going to be all vapor, and this sure enough it's going to be a mixture, isn't it? It's going to be some liquid, and it's going to be some vapor. So I hope that gives you a physical. Feel. And so the masses are different in here, right? Wait, wait. Oh, here we go. That's the heavy one. That's the full one. Uh, it was about uh, 400, there was about 450 grams of material in here. And here there's a small amount, let's say maybe one or a fraction of a gram of propane in here. All right. That was my go live. So back to our slides. Okay, so if the, 
if you could see inside this tank, what would you see? You know, so now we're back to engineering. Let's draw a sketch. You would see here the sloshing, um, but I've got to shake it pretty good to hear the sloshing. So that must mean that uh, functionally, uh, there's a lot of liquid in here and a little vapor because I got to shake it pretty good to hear the hear that sloshing. So um, our physical observations of this vessel, here's our eye looking at the vessel and goofing around with it. Um, we verified that we've got a mixture of liquid and vapor sitting in this tank. So engineering conclusion, there are two phases of propane inside the vessel. This is where you've got to be going to class. You've got to pick up from your instructor the lecture material uh, regarding uh, phases of material, uh, and, and in this case, uh, a phase of vapor and a phase of liquid. Okay, so that's the, you've got to get hooked up to attending your classes to get a good feel for this. But anyway, conclusion for our example problem, there are two phases of propane inside this vessel. Oh, whoops, I forgot to mention it. When I'm teaching the class, I hope that's consistent with, with the other instructors. I classify propane as what, what I call a phase change substance. In other words, it's a substance that is existing in, in the engineering world as potentially as different phases of the same material of propane. So I call it a phase change substance. What other phase change substances can you think of off of your head? To, in my mind, H2O would be classified as a phase change substance because I can boil water on my stove and create water vapor easily. In the real world, I can create vapor from liquid. Okay. And if I, so phase change substance, refrigerant. So what makes your air conditioner run? What makes your refrigerator run? Refrigerant. Uh, R134A and R22, those would be classified as phase change substances. And there are many other. Propane is also called a pure substance. So that's a little, that's different. It's a pure substance. And why do we call it a pure substance? Here's my sketch. Well, it turns out that for our example problem, we've got liquid and we got some vapor, but the, the chemical makeup of both the vapor phase and the liquid phase is exactly the same. And for our situation, it's C3H8. All the phases have the same chemical makeup. That's why we call it a pure substance. In other words, the substance is purely propane, no matter what phase it is in. That's a, a key thing to, to put in your mind, not, not to put on a formula sheet. Okay, so our job, first thing we want to do is figure out, let, let's figure out what the temperature of the propane is inside this vessel, but we can't, oh, and so here's a, oops, here's a thermal probe, okay, I've got, okay, it's a thermal probe, and, but we can't stick, we can't stick this probe inside the vessel, there, there's no way for us to accomplish that, so how are we going to determine the temperature of the propane inside this vessel. Well, let's let's use common sense 101. Okay. The propane in this vessel right now, right as we're speaking, is neither getting hotter or colder. It, it's staying at a constant temperature. Okay. And our surroundings, our surroundings basically are staying at a constant temperature. And so our reasoning is the propane is in thermal equilibrium with the surroundings. Okay, so thermal equilibrium. Well, that means that there's no heat transfer when it's in thermal equal, when two systems are in thermal equilibrium, there's nothing that can drive heat transfer between the two systems. Okay. And so we do common sense 101 reasoning. There's no heat transfer. There's nothing, there's no process going on between this closed system of propane and the surroundings. So here's our conclusion. The propane temperature is exactly the same as the temperature of the surroundings. So look, wow. So let's measure the temperature of the surroundings, and we will therefore know what the temperature of the propane closed system is. Pretty easy. I see I've got an icon that says go live and 
let's do, okay, I guess just to go full screen, it makes it, here's my thermal probe. Okay, I'm measuring the temperature of the surroundings and you can see it's 19 degrees C. 19 degrees C is the temperature of our surroundings. Okay. That's what, okay, and so we're going to conclude. We've gone through that little common sense 101 reasoning. The temperature inside our closed system consisting of propane is 19 degrees C. Okay, back to the slides. All right, that was our go live. All right. So next, the next step is in chapter three, just an extraordinarily powerful chapter for you as a, as a developing engineer. Okay, so we've observed that there's a, let's determine the pressure inside this vessel without making a measurement. We've observed that there is a two phase mixture of propane in the vessel. Then the mixture, so therefore we conclude for jargon, the mixture is at the boiling point at the temperature and pressure combination, okay? It's at the boiling point. In other words, this material, C3H8 propane, it's at its boiling point at the pressure it's at. Okay, now you think, now your, your head may be spinning because you say, wait, boiling point, boiling point. I remember a, a boiling point was 100 degrees C. What was all that about? Well, in our, in our lives, we think of the boiling point of water, the boiling point of water on the stove at 100 degrees C at one atmosphere pressure, at 101 kPa pressure. So that would be a pressure temperature pair, 100 degrees C and 100, 100 kPa for H2O. That would be the boiling point at atmospheric pressure. So, but your understanding, your physical understanding is gonna apply here as well. All right, so let's go back to our, what's the pressure inside this vessel? We just measured the temperature as 19 degrees C. And so you're gonna, chapter three is gonna enable you to determine the pressure. So let, imagine, here's our sketch, okay? We've got, because of gravity, the liquid is low and the vapor is high, right? Just because of gravity, is liquid is, heavier than vapor. So this is a pretty decent sketch of what we've got going on in here. And we're trying to determine the pressure. We cannot hang a pressure gauge. I don't have any ability to get a pressure gauge and attach it to this particular vessel. Um, so, but if we could, so here's my little sketch. If, if we could, what would this pressure gauge read? But we just, but we know the temperature. Okay, so here's what we'll do using chapter three material. We're going to say, look, my instructor has talked about a vapor dome and a pressure temperature relationship, okay? And all I'm going to do is try to give you an example problem. I'm not going to lecture you about all of that stuff. So you've got to attend class. You've got to get this fundamental understanding of the pressure temperature relationship and the vapor dome and uh, get up to speed on the details we're going to talk about here, okay? So in your class, you're going to learn about table A16 in the back of your book for, it says, saturated propane. Oh, let me go back a slide. Look at my label for this tank. It says saturated vapor. And so I've added the word saturated. And down here, I've added the word saturated liquid. And that's consistent with your lectures and the chapter three material. It's not just vapor. When you can see with your eyes or you're sloshing. Um, if you know that there is a liquid interface, a liquid to vapor interface here, you know that what's this is existing in equilibrium. And so therefore the stuff on top is saturated vapor and the stuff on the bottom is saturated liquid. And that's very key. That's very key for you to understand, very key to ask, ask questions in class if you don't fully understand that, okay. Now back to table A16. Uh, these tables in the back of the book depend, you got to be careful that you're getting the right substance. A16 is propane, okay? It says saturated propane. That's our situation here. We have a saturated mixture, a two-phase saturated mixture, saturated liquid and saturated vapor. 
and we go to the temperature table. Well, why do we go to the temperature table? Because we know the temperature. That's why we go to the temperature table. We know the temperature, and we're trying to determine the pressure. All right, so let's let's look at what we've got. We see these column headings. I see temperature in the left column. That's that's our temperature. Well, let's we're, let's look for 19. That's our temperature is 19 degrees C. I just look back at my thermal probe, 19 degrees C. Uh-oh. We don't see 19 here tabulated. We see 16 and 20, so we're somewhere in between here. Let's look at the next column. It says pressure in bar. That's all it says in the textbook. Okay. One thing, if you have the paper textbook, you might write in with your pencil the, the um, uh, P sub G. P sub G, that's, we call that the uh, saturation pressure at this temperature, call it T sub G, okay? But P sub G, that's what this is. And the units, the, the units in this column are bars, bar. That is a measure of pressure. But look, I, so let's look at my slide. I've circled, so we're between 16 and 20. That must mean that our pressure is between 7.15, 7.51, and 8.36 bars. Notice my label, my text box label is different. When you're solving these problems, when you're working on homework problems, don't mess with bars in your calculations. You want to, in SI, you want to be working in KPA. So immediately, immediately change bars to KPA. So just move the, a bar is 100 KPA, one bar, is 100 kPa. So simply slip your decimal place two places to the right. So 7.515 bars is 751.5 kPa, 8.362, 836.2 kPa. You do that immediately when you're problem solving. Okay, so the our saturation pressure, the pressure inside this vessel that's got the saturated mixture is somewhere between 751 and 836 kPa, absolute pressure, absolute pressure. Okay, so next next text box, we're gonna have to do that interpolation thing to really pin down what is the accurate, what is the real absolute pressure in this vessel. We've got to interpolate. I'm not gonna teach you how to interpolate in this video, but your instructor is gonna help you and I can help you if you will watch my How to Interpolate video. So go find that on YouTube. How to Interpolate in Jay's Toolbox. So here, here's the math. We wrote down the temperature, 19 degrees C. Out of interest, I, I converted that to degrees F to see. But it's chilly. I got to tell you, I'm chilly in here. This is the, I'm in my basement here in Daleville. 66 degrees F and surrounding. All right, so back to our problem. What is our pressure in our absolute pressure inside this vessel? In between 16 and 20, I wrote down 19. I wrote down pencil and paper, these two pressures in bar. Okay. I did a linear interpolation between these. So at 19, and wouldn't you expect it to be close to this number since 19 is a lot closer to 20 than it is to 16. So common sense tells you you're going to be close to this number. I do the linear interpolation. I do that in Excel because I do a lot of these situations. And so the answer is the absolute pressure of the propane in this vessel is 815 kPa. So that's what you would, if this were a homework problem, that's what you would write down in a sentence. The absolute pressure of the propane in this vessel is 815 kPa. Do you see how to do that? I, so this is an example problem uh, that I hope will help you in subsequent uh, chapter three homework problems and also moving forward in this course. You're going to do this hundreds of times in this course. You're going to be doing linear interpolation hundreds of times in your homework work and your quiz and test work. So you got to get good at this. Like it or not, you got to get good at interpolation. Next question, what will the pressure gauge? So we're imagining we've hung a pressure gauge. We've, we've hung a pressure gauge on this. Hello. 
we've hung a pressure gauge on this vessel. And the question is, what will the pressure gauge read? So we're going to do a little uh, ref memory refresher on uh, so that printer is already on, I believe. There it goes. Um, what's the pressure gauge reading? Well, we know that in our surroundings here in the world, um, typically the absolute pressure of the surroundings most everywhere is, is going to be somewhere between 100 and 101 kPa. So let's say I, the basement here is 101 kPa. So the pressure gauge is going to read the absolute pressure minus the surroundings absolute pressure. And so the pressure gauge is going to be a lower reading than 815. So the reading on the pressure gauge, if we could hang a gauge on here, would be 714 kPa. 714 kPa will be the pressure gauge reading. So the next little situation, let's pinpoint the state of this this physical mixture, saturated mixture, let's pinpoint the state on the PV diagram. All right, and so let's do the best we can. Common Sense 101, so since we have a saturated mixture, we know that the state is somewhere under the vapor dome because it's a saturated two-phase, somewhere under the vapor dome that I hope you have some understanding of. I'm not giving you enough details, okay? Hope you've got enough lecture material under your belt uh, to understand this vapor dome. And so all we can say at this point is the state is somewhere under the vapor dome. So it could be any of these dots. Any of these dots would be the state, this pinpointing state, the exact state of the mixture in here. But we don't know exactly where that state is, but we're going to get there. I'm going to show you how to, to, to figure out which one of these dots is appropriate to describe the state of the propane in this vessel. Okay. The key to success here is determine the quality of the propane. The quality that is that is sub um, variable x. That's what whenever you see x in this class, x is quality. That is the mass of the liquid in kilograms. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The quality is the mass of the vapor in kilograms divided by the total mass in kilograms. Okay, now we know the total mass from video number one. Okay, we don't know the mass of the, the saturated vapor only, but that's the definition of the quality. Now, again, you, you need to commit to this to memory without any formula sheet. If X is zero, then the mixture is totally saturated liquid. If X turns out to be zero, there's nothing but liquid in this vessel, okay? If X turns out to be 1.0000, then the math, what I, then it's 100% saturated vapor because the definition is saturated vapor mass divided by total mass. So X equals 1.0 would be saturated vapor. All right, well, let's do the math on what we already know, what we already know. Uh, the first step, the first step is to figure out V sub F and V sub G. Let me go back a slide. Say, what does that mean? What's V sub F and what's V sub G? Let me go back a slide. Okay. V sub G is the is this number right here. That is the specific volume of the saturated vapor right there at the dome, right where right on the dome at this temperature. Oh, I didn't, okay. And V sub F, that's right here. That's the specific volume of saturated liquid because they're saturated liquid. I didn't talk enough about this PV diagram, did I? Uh, pressure on the Y-axis, okay. Volume on the specific volume, little v on the X-axis. And, and what else? Have, I've drawn in a vapor dome. I've drawn in a vapor dome. I just draw that in, pencil and paper. I've drawn in this kind of dog leg, crooked dog leg line. That represents a line of constant temperature. We call that an isotherm. Okay, so notice here, it's kind of a dog leg line and your, your instructor will tell you more about why it's a dog leg line, but it says that underneath the dome, you're at the boiling point. 
And so at any given pressure, for our example, our pressure is 815 kPa right here. We already determined, we just determined that, didn't we? Okay, so our temperature is 19 degrees C. Our pressure is 815 kPa. So since this isotherm is a horizontal line, that's why we can't pin down exactly what point we're at. We need to have a little more information. And that little more information is we know our specific volume. In, in video one, we determined the specific volume of our mixture in this tank. That's going to pay off for us. If we know V, okay, so if we can look up a value for V sub G, I'll show you how to do that. We look up a value for V sub F, and if we have our own value of V, then we can calculate the quality. That's the approach. I'm glad I caught myself to go back to here. All right, so here's what we do. We, we need values for V sub G and V sub F. We have to linearly interpolate from our table, our temperature table, because we're at 19 degrees C. So we've got to go through this interpolation deal again. And I've done it, okay. And so here's the line, V sub F is 0.00, .00 1993, it's a little number. And V sub G is 0 0.05681. Now, let me, I, something else just popped through my mind. So I'm going to back up and slide. You're going to have to forgive me, but I'm going to back up a bunch of slides to tell you something important. There we go. We're back to slide 10, but let's look at specific volume of saturated liquid. That is V sub F. V sub F, but look at the column heading. It says times 10 to the three. So our number here, if we come down to this number, it says 1.975 for 16 degrees C, okay? V sub F for 16 degrees C is gonna be numerically 1.975 times 10 to the minus three, times 10 to the minus three. That is critical. That, so that's not trivial. It's not critical. You will you'll get murdered on a quiz or a test. If you're in my class, you'll get murdered uh, if you do not pick up on this exponent for the saturated liquids. Okay, I'm going to repeat it again. V sub F for 16 degrees C is 1.975 times 10 to the minus 3 cubic meters per kilogram. Okay, that's important. Okay. So pick up that exponent in your um, tables. And that's going to be true for H2O as well. Again, pardon me for going off track, but that was so important for you to pick up. All right. So we've got these numbers for V sub G and V sub F. From video number one, we determined that V for our mixture, specific volume for our mixture is 0.002121. Or 2.121 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay. So 0 0.002121 is our V. Now we're just we're just going to go to the definition of quality. It is my hope that you can get this in your head. This thing, this is a fundamental. This is a fundamental. The definition of quality is the quantity. V, the quantity V, your V, minus V sub F, you just looked up that quantity, divided by the quantity Vg minus Vf. It is my hope that you can get that in your brain memory bank instead of depending on a formula sheet to remind yourself what the definition of quality is. Okay, very important. Uh, I won't repeat it here, but it's very important. You might want to download these static slides to refresh your memory on this. Okay, so we're, let's do the math. Now we'll do the math after all that talking. We'll do the math. We'll plug in our numbers to get that X is numerically 0 0.002327. That is a tiny number. That's a tiny quality. Well, let's let's slip the decimal place two places to get a percent. It's it's a quarter of a percent, a quarter of a percent. It's not 23%. It's one quarter of 1%. That's very, very low. The quality X for our mixture, our nearly full propane tank, the quality is extremely low. So what's in this tank is mostly liquid. 
mostly liquid. Got it. Okay. Well, that's good. That's what we purchased. That's what we want. Liquid propane, and we're going to get our money's worth. That's great. Now we can now we can pinpoint the state on our PV diagram. X is 0.23% or 0 0.0023. Therefore, it's very close. To, so let's see. What is X at this point I'm pointing at on my with my cursor? That's 0, 0.0. What's this point right here? This point is 1.00. That's saturated vapor. Okay, so our point, our state is very close to here. So that's all you need to do. You don't have to scale it or anything like that, but this is a complete pressure specific volume diagram, complete with the pressure, complete with the temperature, okay, and the specific volume of our physical situation, our physical situation of this propane tank. Okay, um, let's pinpoint the state now. That was the full tank. Here's the empty tank. I don't hear any sloshing, okay? My conclusion is there's no saturated liquid in this vessel, okay? So therefore, it is not a saturated mixture. It is a, ga it is a vapor or a gas. Either Those are a little bit interchangeable right now. So what, what, can we pinpoint the state for this nearly empty vessel? Well, and so let's go back to our PV diagram that we have here. So what are the possibilities? I've got no, there's no liquid. That means I cannot be under the vapor dome. I could be right on that vapor dome. I could be a saturated vapor in here, okay? Or, depending on, or, and I know the temperature in here is 19 degrees C. So I, my dots could be anywhere along this isotherm. Okay, so I've got, there's a million possibilities here, but it depends on the pressure in here. So with this sort of empty sounding vessel, what we've got in here is probably a superheated vapor. So the phase to the right of the vapor dome is superheated vapor, superheated vapor. So we're probably out here somewhere, okay? Or a, a student might say, well, maybe there's nothing in here, but you can't hear anything. There might be nothing in here. How can I prove to you there is something in here? Well, let's check it out. Let's turn the closed system into an open system. Oh, let me go, go live. All right, I've got this empty sounding propane tank. All right, so here we go. Okay, so uh, I'm going to keep this away from my face, but I'm going to open the valve up. Hopefully, I'm going to hear something. I hear something. Not much. Whew. It's not lighting off. So yesterday it worked for me. There we go. So we've got a little bit. We've got a little bit of propane left. So whew, what a relief. So we, we do have something in here. There's not much, and I'm going to show, at least you you see it with your eyes. I'm going to shut it off. To try to do this, hopefully then I can do the demo again. Let me, let me quit sharing to demonstrate something. Start sharing again. Okay. Now, so some interesting, notice these dots. How do the pressure of these dots here as the dots go down this here, the pressure is decreasing. And you probably couldn't hear it, but the, the hissing of what was coming out of this nearly empty tank was not nearly as strong as when we hooked up this full tank, okay? So that tells me that the pressure in this tank, it has decreased from yesterday when I kind of practiced a little bit. And you saw what a hard time, I had to open this valve wide open to get enough pressure to light this propane off, okay? So that, that's really the, a real-world demonstration of how when you, uh, when you run out of gas, when you're, when you're running out of mass in your system, you're, you're moving the propane, has, uh, it, it's void of any liquid, and as the mass 
leaves the system, yeah, it's now an open system, the pressure, as you could light it off here, which I did yesterday, but today the pressure was even lower because I'd used up more mass yesterday. And so uh, the pressure will continue to drop until finally you run out of gas. Um, there, there's not enough pressure left in this vessel to drive the propane out of the vessel. Or in other words, the pressure will decrease down to atmospheric pressure, and then there's no way to drive, no way to have mass flow. That's going to be covered in your fluid mechanics class. So anyway, there is the demonstration. The, we can't pinpoint the state uh, of our nearly empty vessel, but we can certainly conclude that what you saw with your eyes was a superheated vapor propane at 19 degrees C. Okay, a couple of quiz questions before we finish up. Why do we draw propane out of the top of the vessel when we're using it? Why do we keep this vessel standing up straight or tilted a little bit at our tailgate or whenever we're using this? Or whenever you're using a 20 pound uh, tank of propane? Think about it. Try to answer that in your head. So the answer is what we want when we're using propane out of a real world tank, we need the gaseous propane. We need the vapor. We need propane vapor. Uh, we don't want to utilize propane liquid, okay? Because delivering propane liquid, if we turn this thing up and delivered a similar amount of liquid propane to your uh, gas grill as the same flow rate as your gaseous propane, you would have a big, big problem on your hands. And so I, I feel obligated to add this slide a friendly safety tip. And I know a lot of engineers are curious people. And when they, you know, when someone says, uh, don't turn it upside down, uh, you know, I'd better try that. Do not do that at home. Uh, so uh, that is, would be extraordinarily dangerous. So I want to, I, so I'm not, I'm not kidding. Uh, so do not turn a propane tank upside down and, and draw material out of there and light it off and watch what happens. Uh, that could lead to a catastrophe for you. And if you're showing your friends off, um, showing your friends uh, how smart you are, uh, that could be catastrophic for everybody. So uh, don't do that. So the similar question is, uh, so here's a, a propane delivery tank. Why do we draw propane out of the bottom of this vessel when transferring propane from one tank to the other? So the propane... The, the purpose of the propane tank on wheels is to uh, deliver and sell propane to residential users. And so this box on the back of the propane delivery truck, it, th there's a pump in there. So, uh, so you want to deliver propane liquid to your consumer. Uh, th there's, there's no benefit in simply providing this little bit of propane gas, propane saturated vapor. All right. And so here's the answer here is your, here's a horizontal tank that would represent the gas truck. So what's physically going to happen? Your saturated liquid, as the delivery person um, delivers from house to house to house, this, this vapor liquid level is going to start decreasing as you're drawing propane out of there. What's in this box is a positive displacement pump. And so uh, he or she turns that pump on, measures how many gallons go out of the uh, supply tank into the residential storage vessel. And so uh, that so having a pump pumping propane out of the bottom of the tank um, is what enables the, the delivery person to actually deliver uh, propane even to a tank that's at a higher pressure than the tank in the truck. That's what a pump is for. Okay, and then just to finish up, um, how do you sell propane on the retail market? Uh, how, how, do you, how do you get a bill? Well, so propane is sold per gallon of liquid propane. And so it's sold on a volumetric basis. That's a gallon measure of volume um, of, of the liquid. And, and what is a trend? So, so what is a real world number to give? I was able to download this little nice graphical visual from the U.S., Energy Information Administration. So this is a bona fide 
uh, federal government uh, department. And so you can see the trend from 1995 all the way up to just la last week. Uh, on 1-8-2024, the average retail price uh, in Virginia, in Virginia, was $3.84 per gallon of propane, $3.84 per gallon. Uh, so back in 95, you're looking at around a dollar per gallon. Today, $3.84 a gallon. And so let's see, uh, I see back in, gosh, uh, my arrow, uh, these are five-year periods. So it looks like maybe uh, 2013, we had a spike in, um, in uh, the price of propane. But anyway, right now, uh, about $3.84. Doesn't that sound familiar? That sounds um, another uh, liquid that you purchase um, that, you, that is considered a fuel like gasoline or diesel fuel. We're right around in that same ballpark, aren't we? We're in 384 per gallon. So let's recap. Um, uh, we covered a lot of material in this video uh, related to chapter three. You need to understand what is it, what does a pure substance mean? Okay. Understand what a what's a saturated two-phase mixture, something you can see with your eyes, or well, or you can detect with your senses. Okay. It turns out that it's relatively easy to determine the pressure temperature pair when we know we have a saturated two-phase mixture. It's if you have one, it's relatively easy to determine the other. Okay. It's easy to determine the quality of a saturated mixture when you have the mixture's temperature, we just measured it, and the specific volume V. Easy to determine the quality if you have little v and the temperature or the pressure, one or the other. Okay, so let's look ahead to the third video. Uh, and in that one, I'm gonna try to uh, give you just a little introduction to chapter 13 when we're, we're actually burning propane and, and, and making some uh, calcula engineering calculations on the combustion process. Okay, so I hope that helps you get through chapter three. Chapter three can be one of the most challenging chapters because it's new information to an awful lot of people. Uh, you're not alone. Uh, and so most everybody most all students in your class are struggling with chapter three, but it is so important to master the fundamentals of these saturated mixtures because we're going to be doing that throughout the rest of the class. I know, uh, you know a lot of folks hope that, oh gosh, I hope I have an instructor that only works with ideal gases. Um, we don't have those. So we, we have to, as engineers, mechanical engineers, we've got to get good at dealing uh, with problems associated with ideal gases like air around us, that's an ideal gas. But we've also got to get good at dealing with uh, phase change substances like propane, like steam and water and refrigerant. So those are the sort of the categories of phase change substances that we're gonna be getting good at with you. So I hope that helps and uh, try tuning in for the third video related to propane.